Today's presentation is entitled The Key of Knowledge. Now the question, what could that be? Knowledge is considered as a state of knowing facts and information acquired with the help of experience and reading books. Knowledge is important in this life. It accounts for the success of people. The more knowledgeable you are, the more advantage you have over the other people. The better you are quick to manage yourself and others, the easier your journey of life. More than anything, knowledge must be put to good use. It is said that knowledge is power. This quote has versatile shades of application and holds good in several contexts. Knowledge has enabled us to make all the advancements in the science and technology spheres that we have been able to achieve. It has made us far more capable, superior, and sophisticated beings on this earth. Knowledge is a primary factor that clearly distinguishes humanity from the animals. On the other hand, the lack of knowledge is a foundation for all life failures, destruction, depression, difficulties, hatred, bitterness, envy, etc. What other words do we have for lack of knowledge? Nescience, ignorance, unenlightenment, lack of education, illiteracy, unawareness, backwardness. If the lack of knowledge can cause serious problems and failures in this earthly present life, let's see what the Holy Scriptures have to say about that in reference to a lack of knowledge and the spiritual life and for eternity. We read in Hosea 4 verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the Torah of thy Elohim, I will also forget thy children. This is not talking about unbelievers or atheists, but it refers to people that make the profession to believe in the true Creator and Savior of the Bible. It speaks to his people. Here the lack of knowledge results in eternal damnation and ultimate destruction. That means forever. There is no return. This world is not our home. We are just passing through. There is a heaven to win and the hell to shun. This is a fact. Denial doesn't change this fact as we all must leave this place sooner or later. The reason you and I live here on this planet is not to have a grand holiday, to waste the time given to us on useless things, but to decide where to spend eternity. Yes, we must make a living and be good stewards while here. Prove ourselves. There's a life beyond this one, but not by a soul going to heaven or hell at time of death. Much confusion exists in reference to this topic, which is another study. In this study, we want to look at Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, and see what kind of knowledge the Creator is referring to. He is the one that made the statement, 
through the prophet of Hosea. He is the one that created men and keeps us alive. He is the one that makes the rules. So what does he mean by my people perish from lack of knowledge? It is very important to know what this knowledge is referring to in Hosea, because as I mentioned before, this particular knowledge or lack of knowledge means eternal destruction. That should be a wake-up call to change our priorities if necessary. Let's first see who was responsible for that lack of knowledge when these words were spoken. Here are the words of Yeshua in Luke 11.52. He said, Woe unto you, lawyers! Ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. It was, and it is the spiritual leaders that did then and that are now taking away the key of knowledge that people need in order to be saved. Of course, it is obvious that Satan is behind all this. He is the one that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and is inspiring the false spiritual leaders to do his biddings. These false teachers have been blinded themselves and are misleading their followers. Satan is working through people in leadership, because this way he can deceive a lot more people and send them to damnation. We cannot commit our souls to such leaders. There is a curse pronounced on the false spiritual leaders by Yeshua in Matthew 23. He says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Yeshua asked the question in Luke 6.39, Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? I emphasize again, no one can depend on spiritual leaders of any religion for their eternal salvation unless they know for sure that those leaders are being led by the Spirit of Yahweh. It is a lot more convenient to depend on others and to let others tell us what is right. This, however, is condemned by our Creator. Every individual is obligated to study for himself and to find out what is right and what is wrong. Don't go by feelings and don't guess in this matter. One way to test all leaders and their teachings is written in Isaiah 8.20. It states to the Torah, meaning his instructions given through Moses, and to the witness, which is Yeshua. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no daybreak. In other translation, it says there is no light in them, meaning they are walking in darkness and leading others in that darkness. We have only one life, one opportunity to make the decision for eternity. Therefore, it is the first and highest duty of every rational being in this present life to learn from the scripture, both the Old and the New Testament, what is truth, and then to walk in the light and encourage others to follow 
his example. Sadly, our Christian Bibles are corrupted. Changes were made, sometimes on purpose and many times unknowingly, through translators and false teachers during the past 2,000 years. For that reason, we must go back to the Torah in Hebrew, which is the only document that was preserved accurately. I am referring to the written Torah, the first five books of scriptures, not to the oral Torah, the Talmud, which Judaism clings to. The scriptures tell us what the vital knowledge is that man needs. We find the answer in Proverbs 1.7. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. In John 6.39, Yeshua said, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And this is referring to the Old Testament, the Torah, the Prophets, and the Psalms, as there was no New Testament yet at that time. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 states, The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the set-apart one, the Holy One, is understanding. This refers specifically to the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great I Am, whose name is yod in Hebrew, Yahweh, some people pronounce these four letters as Yahuwah, and others as Yehovah. Now the question, what do I understand by the fear of Yahweh? For the unbeliever, this fear is the fear of judgment and eternal death, eternal separation from the life giver. See Luke 12.5 and Hebrews 10.31. However, for the believer, the fear of Yahweh Elohim is reference and awe towards him. The believer is thankful to his creator and life giver and worships him with reverence and awe. For our Elohim is a consuming fire. This reverence and awe are exactly what the fear of Yahweh means for believers. This is a motivated factor for us to surrender to the creator of the universe because he is a boss. He is in control. He is a life Giver. See John 17, 3, the words of Yeshua. And this is everlasting life, that they should know you, the only true Elohim and Yeshua, Messiah, whom you have sent. The question, how can you get to know someone if you don't even know what his name is? The Creator's name appears almost 7,000 times in the original Hebrew and has been removed by religious leaders inspired by Satan and replaced with titles like Lord, L-O-R-D, in capital letters, and God, by Christianity, and by Judaism with Hashem, meaning the name. People are being presented false man-made gods. That is part of the key of knowledge that was removed, so that most people don't know the name of the Father and the Son, the one that created them, the one that keeps them, the one that gives them life. How can one call upon the name of Elohim if they don't know his name? Is that a good question?
Here's an interesting question in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4. Who has ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who has gathered the wind in its fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? When you study the original Hebrew scripture, you will find that the father's name is written with four Hebrew letters, yod heh vav -He, or in English, Y-H-V-H. -H. The name of the son is written with five Hebrew letters, yod heh vav shin and ayin, pronounced as Yahshua or Yahusha. The true Hebrew Messiah is not Jesus. Jesus is a man-made savior that never existed. And I know that is a shock, but my friends, truth is truth. The name of Jesus is a mask for Tammuz, the sun god, teaching Sunday, Christmas, Easter, baby baptism, Trinity, Friday crucifixion, Sunday resurrection, once saved, always saved, and other non-biblical doctrines. Satan also changed the biblical calendar. Here's another part of the key of knowledge that has been removed. The original calendar given by Yahweh was changed by men by looking to the sun and the moon for the start of the day, month, and year. I know that is a shock for many professed Christians. It was for me at one time. Yeshua stated in John 5.43, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Would that other one Yeshua is referring to be the Christian Jesus that Constantine created? Remember the name Jesus is less than 500 years old and was not known by the disciples 2,000 years ago. Not only was the father's name almost 7,000 times removed and the son's name changed, but that new man-made God that Constantine created doesn't uphold the Torah. The instructions given to Moses on Mount Horeb but claims that these are obsolete since the crucifixion. People need only to believe on this man-made Jesus. Some denominations even teach that the Ten Commandments are no longer binding for Christians. But if you look further into it, they are mainly attacking the Fourth Commandment, which speaks about keeping the weekly Sabbath holy. But Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, teaches something different. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim, fear God, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of men. That means all ten, and not only nine of them. Oh, look at Proverbs chapter 2, the verses 1 to 5. My son, if you accept my words and treasure up my commands with you, so that you make your ear attend to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you would understand the fear of Yahweh and find the knowledge of Elohim. Let's go to the New Testament to 1 John 2, 3-4. Here it says, and hereby we do know that we know him, if 
we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. We cannot get to know our Heavenly Father unless we keep his commandments, statutes, and judgments. Because these express his character, his very being, they show us who he is. The lawyers, the so-called experts of the Torah, took away the key of knowledge of the true Elohim and his son and his instructions and replaced them with their own teachings called the Talmud in Judaism, the Catechism in Catholicism, and man-made creeds and traditions in the various Protestant churches and denominations. Man-made doctrines and teachings are poison, and according to Hosea 4.6, will cause people to end up in the lake of fire. Lack of knowledge? Is there any excuse for ignorance when there is every opportunity to know the will of Yahweh. Many people are making excuses for not coming to the Messiah and to accept his invitation. Satan is always right there to help them to reject the knowledge of salvation. That has been his occupation the last 6,000 years, helping men to make excuses. In Luke 14, 18 it says, and they all with one consent, began to make excuse. Just bear in mind, these men in Luke 14 were invited to a feast, to a celebration, and not to a funeral. They were not invited to go to prison. They were not invited to a hospital or to a madhouse, but they were invited to a feast to accept eternal life, but rejected by making all kinds of excuses. It doesn't make sense for those that know what is at stake. The people that reject knowledge and reject to come to Messiah were blinded by Satan. They had no idea what they were rejecting and the people today have no idea what they are rejecting. There are no acceptable excuses not to know that this world did not come into being by a Big Bang, but by a designer who created this world and the universe. Scripture states that the eternal power and the deity of Yahweh are observed by all. Romans 1, 18 to 21 states plainly, for the wrath of Elohim is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of Elohim is manifest in them, for Yahweh has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew Elohim, they did not glorify him as Elohim, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Even those who do not know the scriptures are without excuse because all around them they can see ample evidence of the eternal power and deity of the Creator Elohim. This should cause them to seek Him. In Deuteronomy 4.29, Israel was told that even in captivity, they could find Yahweh Elohim if they diligently sought him. This is from the scriptures, but from there you shall seek Yahweh 
your Elohim and shall find when you search for him with all your heart and with all your being. Proverbs 8.17 from the ASV Yahweh has promised, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. And then Jeremiah 29.13 from the ASV And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Yeshua said in Matthew 7, 7 and 8, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Don't be fooled and deceived by today's religious leaders. Stay away from them. Instead, go directly to the source of our life. There is hope only when you turn to the Elohim, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Confess your sins before him in the name of Yeshua, HaMashiach. Be baptized in his name and follow his instructions called the Torah. It is that simple. Only Yeshua, the Hebrew Messiah, not the Greek Jesus, is the answer as he stated in John 14, 6. Yeshua said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Acts 4.12 and there is no deliverance in anyone else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we need to be saved. And my friends, that name is not Jesus, but Yeshua HaMashiach. A key is a device used to open the way into, as in a door. The removal of the Father's and the Son's name from the Holy Scripture is the first part of the key of knowledge false leaders and teachers have taken from the people, which causes millions to be lost because they are following a false Messiah. The second part of the key of knowledge that was removed is the Torah, which Yeshua himself gave to Moses at Mount Sinai. Christianity claims that these instructions are no longer binding for believers. People are being lost due to the removal of this knowledge and they walk in spiritual darkness. We have seen and are seeing laws being passed by the governments that are opposite to the instructions of Yahweh and the judgments of Yahweh will be poured out soon upon this world. Could COVID-19 mark the beginning? It does have the potential. Be warned and prepare. The main provider is Yahshua HaMashiach. This message was prepared and recorded by myself and you can get a hold of me through Malachi 4.4 at Reagan.com or go to the website thefictorygeneration.net or thefictorygeneration.com. Remember, the biggest problem is not to die from a virus. The biggest problem is to die without Yeshua HaMashiach and that our names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life.